Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter. And obviously, social media links, there you go. Kerry the Crafter on Facebook, Kerry the Crafter on Etsy, that's my Etsy shop. I normally only sell digital downloads, but in 2021 you may see some physical products coming from me. If you're someone who likes cake decoration and design, if you to look at Kerry the Cake, you'll find me there as well, which is the other side of my creativity, which is the world of cake. Now, what I want to do today is I want to jump on and show you a little bit of a project using one of my old moulds that I designed for Kate Suit Designs. And this is it. It's part of the Creative Cake system. I designed it in 2017. It's manufactured and distributed by um, KTC Designs here in the UK. It's food safe, so I'm going to work in clay today, but there is a YouTube out there of me doing sugar butterflies as well, but this one we're using today. So that's the mould we're going to use. Now, as you just heard me say, I'm going to be using clay. So let's just do a bit of what are we going to use, and then I can show you actually how to use it. So first of all, this is the product I'm using, Hearty White. Now, this is the block of white. It comes in a big, a big pack, 200 grams, but then it also comes in numerous other colours. Um, I believe there are nine different colours in total. The one I haven't got here is the red, because the red packet's already opened. And I forgot I didn't show it to you beforehand, so there you go. So you've got the brown, magenta, green, blue, orange, yellow, light green. There is the dark green, obviously, black, orange, and blue. Now, when you look at these packs, with the exception of the black, if you look at this button here, that's actually the colour that the clay is within the packet. It is very heavily pigmentated, so what I would say is you're probably going to have to buy the white if you want pastel colours, because these are really intensive. So let me just clear the decks a little bit. Get them out of my way. So there you go. So we're going to be working primarily with my mould. I'm going to show you how I make the body for it. I'm going to show you how I make the wings, how I put them together, assemble them. I'm going to give you as many tips as I can as I go along. But, um, when it comes to doing small detail pieces like this, I will try and raise it up to the camera so we get a really close look at what I'm doing. But forgive me if I'm not able to do that. So first of all, let's look what we're going to make. So this is what I'm aiming to make. This is just one of the three butterflies. This is the one at the bottom. I'll probably demonstrate the top one. The middle one will look the same when you do it. And the bottom one is what I'm going to be creating in the end. But I don't know. I'll see how it goes. So this is a clay butterfly. Obviously, if you're going to use it on cake decorating, you have to make sure that the clay is not in contact with any edible stuff because I'm going to be using these like hairspray and... Um, makeup dusts and that on this so you just have to be a little more cautious make sure it's not in contact but if it was wired into a bouquet and because this is actually clay it's not susceptible to moisture or anything so you can make little buttonholes with these any clay project you don't even need to have them on wires to be honest you could make the elements separately for card making crafting and anything like that so that's what we're going to aim to make so let's put that out of the way so first things first let's make a wing now three sets of wings. We are not doing this in this video, but I will show you something anyway. If you were going to make one wing and it wasn't going to be wired, the way the mould was designed was you could fold the mould over, press the back, and then when you took that out, you'd have a pattern on either side of the wing, both the front and the back. We're not doing in this because I'm actually going to do a wired version. So first things first, let's choose the colour. Now, I think I'm going to do a pink butterfly. So let's take my little bit of my clay out of here. Now, when you first take the clay out of um, its foil packaging, I would say leave it sit out for a few minutes just because otherwise it's really quite moist. Whereas after a few minutes, it will become a little firmer. Now, these are really good quality silicone molds. They will release. I'm going to put a little bit of white vegetable fat into mine. And I'm only doing that to actually hold the fat in place. So as I said, I'm going to do one of these wings or, you know, let's change my mind. Let's do one of the ones I'm actually going to be using, just so you can see it is possible to get this one out. So there you go. So I put that in. It was the tiniest, tiniest bit amount. If you don't want to use white vegetable fat, and some countries that's Trek, some countries that Crisco, you can actually just dust this with cornstarch 
or corn flour. I tend to like the white vegetable fat for the simple reason it actually grips whatever I'm putting in it, but otherwise, because these are so shallow, they will come back out, right? As you can see, I'm doing a little rocking action and I'm working the clay along towards the end of the molded piece. Now use the pad of my thumb just to wipe away the excess. Take a little bottle there. You want to be able to see all of the edges of the wings. Okay, now this, this clay, when it dries, will shrink by about 10 or 12%. So don't worry, you're gonna have slightly smaller butterflies when you're finished, but everything will shrink at the same rate. So let's push that in. Now I'm gonna try and make sure that all of the edges are clean. Now the way to check that is if I open the mold up slightly, I can see, I can see there that that little bit's covered over. So there you go, let's pull that up to the camera just so you can have a closer look. So I've put the clay in there. I can see all the way around the edge. So if I do happen to open this up slightly, as you can see, I can see all of the edges all the way around. Now, at this point, I take a piece of white florist wire. Now, I want to say this is probably a 28 gauge. I go with a slightly thin version of the wire because I don't want it to be too bulky. I take a little tiny piece of the clay and then I'm going to take some white PVA glue. Now mine's only in a pot just for the ease of use. I'm talking about the regular sticky glue, the PVA that we all use. So I'm just going to dip the very end of the wire into it, just a little bit, push it into the wire and then I'm going to roll it in my fingers to actually make myself a little bird at the top. Now the little bird needs to be no longer than the gap between the point of the wing and the end. So this is one of those things you just have to use judgment. I can't possibly give you a measurement for this because every time you do it, it's gonna be slightly different. So there you go. So that's sort of where I want it to be. I'm then gonna just put a little bit of the glue on here, only a little touch. Now this, this clay will stick to itself. However, I put a little bit of glue on there just as an insurance sake. I'm going to lay that on there so that it joins at the point of the wing. Then I tend to get a credit card or a store card or something and just press the back so it's flat. Now you could do this with another mold, it'll be fine. Let's move that to one side. And then what I do is I actually just wiggle my mold slightly all the way around. Don't pull it by the wire because if you pull it by the wire, the wire is going to come out. Now once that's out, lay it down flat just to make sure it's flush to the back and that gives you your wing. Now, I don't mind that the back is actually not the same as the front because in this instance, the butterfly is not going to be seen from the back. What I would do then is lay that on a bit of, bit of kitchen towel or kitchen paper, whichever country you're in, this is what I'm talking about. And I would let it dry for probably an hour. Then I would turn it over and let it dry on the other side because you'll find with this clay, as it dries, it tends to curl up to the exposed side. So if you turn it over, it'll keep flat. Once that's completely dry, you can put it in a box. There you go. These are ones I made, good grief, about at least two months ago. They're all nice and dry. This is how I normally store my butterfly wings. And I store them like this, because that way they're not going to be damaged. It only takes a few minutes to assemble a butterfly. So therefore, I'm going to make one set of wings. Some will make multiple sets of wings. As you can see in this box, there's, there's the top wing as well. Do I have any of the lower ones? I do, there you go. And that's the other sort of wing. So they all come out, they've got really beautiful detail on. So let's put that to one side now. So let's move the wing over where it's safely out of the way. And let's talk about making a body for this butterfly. And now, when you're not using clay, make sure it's put into a sealed bag or an airtight container because the glue is in the name air drying. You don't want it to air dry, do you? Now, when it comes to the next bit, the next bit is actually the body we're going to make. Now, I'm going to use dark brown for mine, but whatever your butterfly is, is whatever your butterfly is, so you can make whatever colour you want. One of the first things I need to do is I need to make the wire as a support for it. Now, this is the bit that I was a bit worried that I might not be able to show you on camera. I lay the wire so it's almost the length of the body. Then I'm just going to bend that. So let me just bend that up. Just and lift this up again. So as you can see, 
it's approximately the length of the body. Okay, now I'm going to fold that quite tightly over. Excuse me fumbling slightly, I'm looking through an iPad, I'm not actually looking at what I'm doing, which is never the easiest of things. So once that's in there, the next thing I'm going to do is in the middle of the body, in the middle of this piece here, is where the wings are going to be attached. I put my thumb in and I lift this up. And what I've done is I've created a T-shaped support that fits into that body. And once that's inserted into the body, it will actually hold the body securely so that you won't have any bits of clay hanging in midair. That's the T-shape we're trying to do. So one more time. I measure it about the length of it. I bend it up and I bend it up again. So therefore, let's do it. Let's do it with another one just so that I've done this because this is the one that I know I'll get the most questions about. So I lay the wire down the center of the body and then I fold it up. Just fold that up. So it's approximately the size of the body. Then I fold this completely up so it's nice and flush. When I've got that back down again laying in there, I go into the middle of here, put my thumb in, and I pull that up. And what that will do, once you've done it, you can then tidy it up like I'm doing here. You end up with this T-shape, and this T-shape is going to be the support for the body. So again, that T-shape will fit within there, and it will all make sense in a moment when I do one. So let's put my wire to one side. Now the centre of here, again, I'm going to rub a little bit of white vegetable fat into it. Just a little bit. I tend to use white vegetable fat a lot because I've got hot hands and they get a bit sticky and sometimes they pull the clay back out of the mould. Um, as I said, some people do use um, corn starch or corn flour. I've even known one or two people use talcum powder. So I'm going to take a little bit. I'm using the brown for this. You could use the black. It depends, as I said, on what style of butterfly you're doing. Roll it roughly to the right shape. Let's move that out of the way. I like to start at the head of the butterfly. So I'll push it down into the body and I'll work all the way down to the end. Again, pad of my thumb, press down and take it off. Now, I want to make sure this is nice and flush and nice and clean all the way along. So I'm looking towards it being in the mold. Try not to overfill your mold too much but don't underfill it, because if you underfill it, what's going to happen is you're going to find, again, I'm going to have a little bit of a press. I tend to use store cards and hotel door cards and things like that to do this, just because I like a flat surface on the back. Make sure that it's actually opened on either side. So I've got that in there. Now I'm going to take my T-shaped support, if I can pick it up, my T-shaped support. I'm going to come in and I'm going to put a little bit of glue on this. Just enough, I don't want it soaking in glue. I just want a little bit to help it stick. All the way down. So just a tiny little bit of glue on there. And then I come in from above and I'll push it down into the clay. Now my hand is in the way here and I'm gonna move it in a minute just so you can see. So there you go. So I'm gonna sit it into the middle. I'm then gonna get a modeling tool you could use anything at this point. You could use the end of a paintbrush, whatever you wish. And I'm going to push that down slightly into the clay. And then I'm going to try and fold the clay just over a little bit. Just to encase it all. If at this point you want to add a little bit more clay, you can... Oh, see, it comes out really easy. Let's put that back in there. If you want to add a little bit more clay at this point, you could. And what I would say is just take a little tiny piece in your hand put it on there. Your aim is to try and conceal that wire. Not because you want to make it invisible to the eye, you just want to make sure it's fully embedded. So a little bit more clay down there I think. And this is why I said don't overfill your mould because I do know you're going to be filling it a little bit later here. So once I've done that, that's all embedded. I tend to get my store card or my credit card or hotel room and I press down either side. This will just make sure everything is fully, fully embedded. Okay, tidy up the edges, make sure there's nothing, nothing protruding I don't need to protrude. And then give it a bit of a wiggle. As you can see, it just falls straight out. Now, at this point, I've got the body for my butterfly made. So 
I'll bring it up a little bit closer to you. Although there's obviously a few elements missing from this. So let's put the butterfly body in here while I show you the next stage of this. Let's move that to one side. Now the next thing I do is I'm going to take some flower stamens, artificial stamens. Let's pull in a bit of cream card so you can actually see better what I'm holding in my hands. Um, these are floral stamens, flower stamens. They come in various different sizes. If you haven't got access to these, you could always use something like some um, heavy duty black thread, anything like that. You could even use um, dark wires. So let's take that. I'm going to bend this in half. If I can pick it up. There you go. I'm going to bend this in half. There you go. And then I tend to pinch it and it's usually about half an inch from the top. Depends on the butterfly I want to make. Snip that little bit off and that gives me my two antennae for my butterfly. And I'm going to bring my glue back in again. Now, with this, hold your butterfly so that you're supporting it really close to the bottom. Then dip the very end of your stamen into glue and insert it into the head. And do that twice. Now don't worry that there's a little bit of white PVA glue showing. Believe me, that will dry clear and there won't be an issue afterwards. So there you go. I've just put the antenna in. So you can get your focus on that. There you go. And then I'm going to let this sit. Now I don't normally do the wings or the antennae. Um, the wings or the body. I don't normally use them the same day. I make them. I tend to, as you can see, mass make and I leave them for the next day. So let's have a little bit of a tidy up here and then I can show you the dusting process and the assembly process. So what I would recommend is if you're going to be doing these butterflies, if you've got everything out, go ahead, make six or seven or ten bodies and make six or seven or ten pairs of wings so you've got them all ready to go. So let's leave that by there a second. So in my total blue Peter moment, here's a couple of wings I made earlier and a body I made earlier. OK, just so you can see that the elements were pre-made and have been dried overnight. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I want to put a bit of character into these. I'm going to give a little bit of a dust to these wings just to make sure that they've got a bit more dimension. Now, at this point, you could come in with acrylics. You could use an ink pad and maybe press it on there to get the black lines. You could get a fine paintbrush and paint the detail. I'm just showing you the absolute basic butterfly. From here on in, it's what you wish to make it. Now, when it comes to dusting clay, you can use dust food colours, you can use ground chalks, you can airbrush them, you can use sprays. I tend to use eyeshadows. You know those eyeshadow kits you can get in the pound store or the dollar store? They've usually got quite a nice palette of colours. So I'm just coming in, take a little bit of the dust, and I like to shade it from the inside outwards. Just inside out like that. I only put a little bit on because I don't, if I wanted a darker butter, butterfly in total, I would have shaded the whole thing to start with. So now I don't tend to do the back, but if you wish to do the back, you just come over and do the same on the back. You can just come in and put some color onto that. I mean, as I said, I don't tend to do that because my butterflies are normally seen from the front and not the back, but you can do this. So once we've done that, now if this was something like um, a chalk piece of art, you would actually need to set the dust and we will need to set the dust. So let's just take a little bit more dust here. I want this a little bit darker here, just so I had a little bit more drama on that. There you go. Now don't ever think you're going to be able to make butterflies absolutely identical. You won't. This method, they're all going to be slightly different. Now the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to take an inexpensive hairspray. It doesn't have to be this brand. This just happens to be the brand that I could get in a travel size. Any, it doesn't need to be firm hold either. It can be any one you wish. And all I'm going to do, and I'm going to do this off camera guys, so that it doesn't actually obliterate my iPad lens. Let's put that there to stand them in. I'm going to take this and give them a little bit of a spritz with this. Now all that's done is it's made them slightly shiny but what it will do is it will set the dust so then the dust wouldn't fall on any of your projects 
Now, as you know, or at least the ladies out there should know, hairspray doesn't take a heck of a lot of time to actually dry. So I'm going to leave those for a few seconds and we're going to assemble this. There you go. Now, um, one thing I would say is with this clay, anything you can use on paper, you can use on this with the exception of heat embossing. Don't, don't think you can heat emboss these. You can paint them with acrylics. You could paint them with a glue and put glitter onto them. You can add gems to the wings. I mean, if you've got little tiny gems, you could drop a gem in there, maybe a gem in there. If you've got the stickles, you know, the stickles are a gel-based glitter, you could put them into there to make something different. There were lots and lots and lots of different ways to use these guys. So I think by now, my wings are pretty much dry. They look reasonably dry to me. So let's move that to one side. Now the next thing you're going to need is some florist tape. Now this is florist tape I've cut into quarter width. Um, quarter width means the whole width has been cut into four. I've got a tape runner that can cut this. If you can only get the full width, just pull some out and cut it with the scissors. Now I recommend quarter width because you don't want the tape at the bottom of the butterfly to be too bulky. When you use florist tape, you need to give it a slight stretch to use it, and that will release the glue or the wax within it. Now, when it comes to attaching the wings, as you can see, this wasn't quite dry. Um, support the wings between your finger and thumb and bend the wire down. Okay, you just want to make a 90 degree angle. By doing that, it'll make it a lot easier for you. So let's just wipe that off my hands. Now, um, as you can see, I need to start assembly here. The first thing I need to do is make sure the tape is attached to the body. So I'm going to start a little bit down the, the wire, wrap it round a couple of times, and then slide it up to the base of the body of the butterfly. There you go. So it's all underneath it. Then now when you're putting the wings on, don't worry if the wings spin around. You can adjust them later. So I put that on, give it one wrap around. I'm going to bring my other wing in from the other side and put it up under the body and give it another wrap around. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to wind the floral tape down the rest of the wire. This wire can be whatever length you wish it to be. If you're doing an arrangement of flowers, say, and you want to put these in it, then you might want to leave the wires really long. So luckily enough, my wings didn't move around too much. So there you go, that's how I make a butterfly. And then that would sit within my arrangement. So if I take that out of the way and bring in the original, let's take that body out of it, we don't need it. There you go guys, that's, that's how I make my clay butterflies. So they're really cute, they do store well, as I said, it's a very easy thing to make. You can go in, you can use an ink pad to, I can't speak, an ink pad to actually colour the ridges if you wish, but those are a cute idea. I use them quite a lot. As I said, I do to make my wings, I do make them and actually store them dried flat. I do make the bodies and then once I've made the bodies, I'll just lay the bodies into the box as well. So when it comes time to make them, these make cute little gifts. If you're doing something for a little girl and there's maybe a fairy or toadstools or something, you can perch one of these in here. You can even make these and slot them into the soil around a real flower pot with a real plant in just to add a little more interest. So hopefully you really enjoyed that guys. If it's one of my own makes, it's one of my own designs. I'll try and remember to put the link to this mold into the description box underneath. And if you look at the video in this corner, you'll see a little gray V. If you click on that, it'll drop down. There'll be a description. The link will be in there. So hopefully you enjoyed that. I used the Butterfly Trio mold by me, by KTC Designs as well. And that's part of the Creative Cake system. So for me, it's time to say goodbye. Don't forget, these are my social media links. Kerry the Crafter, obviously Facebook. Kerry the Crafter on my Etsy store. If you've liked this video, please click subscribe. Um, I'm gonna try and do more and more. And don't forget, I don't only do clay. I don't even do craft. I don't only do cake. I do lots of things. So you'll see lots and lots of stuff popping up from me. So it's goodbye from me, Kerry the Crafter, C-E-R-I the Crafter, and I'll see you next time.
Bye-bye now.